CUBE Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and welcome to a special CUBE Conversation. We've been talking to leaders around the industry about how they are helping their organizations and their customers in these challenging times with COVID-19. Really happy to bring back to the program one of our CUBE alumni. He also has a new title. Paul Cormier is now the president and CEO of Red Hat. Paul, uh, it is great to see you. Uh, we live geographically not too far apart. Normally we would be getting together in person uh, for Summit. Uh, of course, that event's happening digitally, but thanks so much for joining us. Uh, my pleasure, Stu. Always a pleasure with you guys. All right, so Paul, you have a you know, storied history at Red Hat. You know, I, I've sat through many keynotes where you walk through the product and portfolio, looked at the acquisitions, uh, looked at the strategic direction moves. Taking the new job as CEO uh, is a big move uh, in regular times. Of course, we're not in regular times, we're in right. rather unique times here. So let, let, let's start there. What does it mean about coming into this new role uh, in the, the times that we are facing? You know, you know, as, as I see it, considering the times here, um, I, I think it's probably one of the biggest decisions I've made in my career to take on this new job. Only because, you know, as you know, Stu, you've, we, we've talked a lot. I've, I've been here from certainly the beginning of our move to the enterprise in 19 years. Uh, I was probably 120 or so. And, and I think, um, I actually think that we have brought such a big, uh, value to our customers. I think our customers actually are going to see even more value as we come out of this because th than they have in the past. For one thing, with the combination of IBM, we're, we're able to reach a, uh, a wider set of customers out there that we can bring into the Linux world where all the innovation's happening. So I think, um, I think our customers, we've, we've treated this, our product line as an enterprise grade product line since, since the beginning, since day one. We're literally helping our customers keep their businesses running at this point on our product lines because of you know, everything we've done to make them enter enterprise class. Yeah, so Paul, some previous you know, challenges in my, uh, in my career, you talk about whether financial, uh, you know, whether it is natural disasters or 9-11, uh, you know, the, the technical industry needs to kind of rally together. But you know, one of the things that is different about this is the impact it has on every employee. Uh, I wasn't surprised to see that the letter that you sent out uh, to all of the associates was, you know, posted on the Red Hat site. It didn't need to be leaked or anything like that. Uh, so, you know, the transparency always is appreciated. But bring us inside a little bit. The organization, you know, how are you, you know, helping your employees uh, and making sure that they can deal with all of the personal things uh, that they need to deal with while still uh, being there for your customers? Sure. I mean, well, well first of all, first of all, um, one of the things is. You know, we're sort of used to working remotely uh, when the need arises, and even full time for that case. A big percentage of our associates are rem work remotely 100% of the time. We've always had the philosophy in that we, especially in engineering, where we go after the best possible talent. And the unique part of being 100% open source focused is that our engineers know the other engineers that are working in our communities, whether they know them. You know, if you've ever met them face to face, they certainly know them very well on a professional level. So a lot of our people were used to working remotely. The other thing, um, the other thing is um, most of Red Hat is type A personality type people. So that's that's a good thing on some days and maybe a tough thing on other days. But but the, the, what that means is everybody works from home at some period, whether it's you know they go to the office all day and then wake up at midnight and do some more, or it's a Saturday or Sunday. We're all pretty much, um, you know, set up to do that. So our IT department has been, you know, they've been fabulous through this. You know, we've had, you know, a, a, a gazillion more hours of both VPN and, and video hours, and it, it's just all work. But um, they've had a great test bed for all these years. So from, from that standpoint, from that technical standpoint, it's worked very well. From, from the employee standpoint, we've really, um, we've really picked up the video, all hands video conferencing from once a quarter every two weeks. And so, you know, I had an all hands meeting uh, two days ago, three days ago, when I was announced on my new role and I committed to them, we're going we're gonna to have an all hands every two weeks. Come and talk, we'll give you the updates, et cetera. So I think that's one thing. You can't over communicate at a time like this. And I think the third thing that my, I guess to say my former products group now, but um, you know, I still, I still love those guys. Um, my, my former 
group, the products group, they actually had a very great idea. They're holding virtual office hours for their, for their colleagues in the field uh, once a week. And we're actually holding once in the morning, once later at night for the people in Asia Pacific, actual hours with the product managers and the engineers, et cetera, are getting on video conference to integrate and, inter and talk with the folks out in the field about what we're doing in the products and, and what's going on. Um, and what's upcoming and hear their issues as well. I think this serves as two things. The first thing this serves of, certainly it keeps people engaged, but secondly, you know, our people love the technology. And so to some extent with everything going on around COVID and how serious it is in every country, it almost gives our, our people almost an escape from that to really spend an hour or two a, a day on this and just really have conversations with you, with each other about the business and the products and the technology. So that's become a really big hit inside as well. Yeah, uh, you know, definitely there are some things that just get amplified. You talked about, you know, we're used to being able to be on or join meetings, you know, regardless of, of the time of day. I'm, I'm sure your team, plenty of blue jeans and Zoom uh, meetings before this, but it has taken a slightly different tone now. Uh, with, uh, you know, you've now got everybody at home, uh, you know, and managing, uh, you know, other personal relationships and things that are happening uh, on the outside. Um, you, you are still holding Red Hat Summit uh, at the end of April. Uh, I think there's, there's a real strong, uh, you know, push from your team to, uh, you know, balance and make sure that you're there for your customers, but it's it's not going to be as much of the hoopla. There's not the you know the swag and the announcements uh, that are going on. Um, why is it important to still bring the community together uh, and you know meet with your your partners and customers, uh, you know, rather than push it off to later this year? You know, it's a great question. You know, I said in my note that um, when I stand up on stage for my keynote at the summit every year, even though I'm so many years, I don't even know how many summits, 13, 14, something like that. Even when, even it's, it's such a rush because we I really do stand there. You know, Jim talked about this on our internal handoff where he said, you know, remember Paul and I in a ballroom at one of the first summits at some hotel, we looked behind the curtain and I said to him, wow, there's, a, there's 300 people out there. And, you know, last year in Boston, I looked out and said, wow, there's 10,000 people here. It, it, it's amazing. So it really started as a, as a way to really talk to and interact with both our customers and our community as well. But it turned into a celebration and not just a celebration of internal Red Hat people, a celebration of the whole ecosystem and partners and customers and upstream people of how far open source and Linux has come. And we didn't think that celebration part this year was really appropriate considering where we were, but, but we all still have a job to do. We're all doing them remotely. And as I said, we're running many of our customers' business. So we felt it was really important to put this out there to have our customers understand where we're going in the coming year, the new, some of the new products that we have coming and how we can help them. And so that's really more of the tone this year. And, and we feel that's still important. We all have a, a big job right now, and coming out of this, we're even going to have all bigger jobs and how we re-entry into this and, and balance that. So that's really the focus this year, how we can continue to help with the technology we brought to the enterprise for the last 19 years. Yeah, uh, Paul, the last question I have for you, uh, you know, I think back to Summit last year, Satya Nadella was on stage, Jenny, Jenny Rometty was up on stage. Uh, of course, Red Hat, you know, tightly tied into you know, a broad community and ecosystem network out there. So as, as the leader of Red Hat, you know, how are you, you know, in contact and working with, you know, the communities and the partner ecosystem uh, to both manage through and be ready for uh, the other side of, of what we're facing today? I mean, in, in one regard, especially with, with, with many, it, it's almost more at this point. Um, I mean, the, the partners in the ecosystems are really important. Um, many of the partners, especially the smaller partners, they look to us for leadership. So, so we still have communication with them, um, and partly the summit is 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 for them as well. So some of the larger partners, like that you mentioned, Microsoft and certainly IBM and and Amazon and Google and others, um, we actually communicate almost more now that we're all working from home because, as I said earlier, the same goes outside as it does in, inside. Um, you just can't over-communicate this environment. And, you know, as you know, Stu, 
the tech industry, it looks like this giant industry, but it really is kind of a small industry. And so a lot of us know each other from, from many years. And so that communication is going on. We're comparing notes. Actually, in, in many cases, we're comparing notes maybe even more than we might have in the past. So, you know, what are, what are you guys doing at your company to, to plan for this? Is And I, I've actually seen some of the partners who focus in proprietary technologies even become a more bit more open on those discussions now. So I think maybe that could be, if there's any good outcome of this, that could be one of the outcomes that's slightly positive. All right. Well, Paul, thank you so much for the update. Uh, congratulations uh, on uh, your new role. We absolutely are looking forward to uh, the, the summit at the end of the month. Thanks again. Always great to see you, Stu. Thanks very much. All right. Uh, be sure to check out thecube.net where you can see the, the, the preview of Red Hat Summit as well as the guests that we will have there. Uh, we will have Paul, uh, Stephanie, uh, Matt Hicks, uh, lots of the Red Hat executives, their customers and partners. I'm Stu Miniman and thank you for watching theCUBE.